Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mr. Gagnon again. We're going to take a peek at uh, something called circular motion. Uh, until now, we've been looking at, looking at linear motion, which is uh, in a straight line like in this one. Um, but circular motion just repeats itself. Okay, so it's a circle, uh, something going around in a circle as if attached by a string or by another force like gravity. Um, an example of this would be the planets going around the sun. Um, so a couple terms we need to look at. Uh, the first one is called period. Okay, and then um, that is the time it takes for an object to complete one trip around a circular path. So time, it is measured in seconds. Time it takes to complete one circular path. So, um, for instance, uh, the period of the Earth is one year. Okay, and we can call this big T. Okay, and it's used uh, seconds, generally. We can convert year to seconds in that case. Okay, another situation would be a normal clock. So if you have a clock... Okay, here's the minute hand, here's the hour hand. Uh, the period of ro rotation, the clock of a minute hand, is exactly one minute, or 60 seconds. Okay, looking back at the clock, the period of the second hand is 60 seconds, and the period of a minute hand is 60 minutes. Got to complete one circular path. Okay, what we're given is a formula to find the period of rotation. Okay, and what it is is big T equals little t over n. Uh, this is the time. And this is the number of trips. So the first question would be, what is the period of the minute hand on a clock? Uh, so that would be um, the minute hand going around the clock fully would be one hour. Okay, a second question might be, what is the period of Earth's rotation. Okay, and you'd, you'd say in one year it goes around the sun once. Um, here's a here's a simple question. If I have a time of 50 seconds for an object to travel around a circle five times, what is the period of rotation? So we can take a look at this and say that the period is the time over the number of rotations. 50 seconds over 5 times. Okay, so we're looking at a period of 10 seconds per rotation. Okay, by this point you guys should be able to solve uh, for the three renditions of this formula. Uh, but I will go through that with you right now. So the period equals the time over the number. Let's say you want to solve for time. Okay, here's the second rendition of the formula. Number times the period equals the time. And then we'll solve next for the number. Okay, so the number of rotations equals the time divided by the period, little t over big T. Okay, so those are the three renditions of that, and you will have to solve for the period, uh, for the time, and for the number. So another useful tool would be something called frequency, and this is just um, how often a cycle repeats itself. 
So the number of revolutions that an object completes in a given amount of time is called its frequency of motion. Um, so this is how often it happens. Um, and we, ha and we, we, we actually use uh, per second. So if, if, and the units are hertz. So one hertz equals one time per second for one second. Okay. So if it's like 60 hertz, okay, that's 60 times per second. Okay, so that's something that we call frequency. And we can actually come up with a formula for that as well. Frequency is the number over time or n over t. A common example of frequency can be seen on a dashboard of a car uh, noting your revolutions per minute of the engine to crankshaft. Okay, so we've got frequency is n over t, and again, this is a three-way formula where you have f is uh, n over t. We can solve for n, okay, by getting rid of the t. Frequency times time is the number. Okay, this is number two. Okay, and then the third rendition of the formula, okay, we'll solve right now. That is solving for the time. So we can divide by frequency. So time is the number over frequency. So this is our third rendition of the formula for frequency. Okay, this is the first one, second one, and third one. So these are the formulas that you want to write down. So a typical example of this would be an object travels around in a circle uh, 50 times. So the number would be 50 um, in 10 seconds. Okay, and it says calculate its frequency in hertz of its motion. So we know that frequency equals number over time. And so we end up using that formula, and it's going to be 50 over 10. Frequency is 5 hertz. Okay, and these are simple formulas to get you uh, started with circular motion. Okay, we're going to get, talk to you guys a little bit about period and frequency. So the period and the frequency both have something in common. The period is time over number, and the frequency is number over time. So in reality, uh, these two formulas are very, uh, very similar. And we can say that the period is 1 over the frequency, and the frequency is 1 over the period. Okay, so we can call these guys inverses. Okay, so these can be called inverses of each other. So a typical example would be, um, I would give you the frequency and you would have to figure out the period. Or I would give you the period and you would have to tell me the frequency. Okay, it's simple as putting a one over that number. So now when we get into velocity, okay, we're gonna call it rotational velocity. Okay, now that's not straight line velocity, that is velocity around a circle now. Okay, we are gonna relate that to the circumference of a circle, which you learned in math class. Circumference is uh, 2 pi r, uh, r being the radius of the circle, okay, and um, the time period is the time it takes to go 
to go around a circle. So normally we can say we remember this formula. Speed is distance over time. So we're going to come up with a little bit of a different formula in rotational uh, velocity. So rotational velocity is the distance okay, or the circumference 2 pi r over the period. So here's our new formula here. Uh, velocity is 2 pi r over the period. So um, in a situation, I would give you the radius of a circle, um, and I would give you the period, and you'd have to find the velocity. So again, you can see how we can pull out two other variables from this. We could solve for r, and we could solve for period. Okay. Now the radius of a circle is as simple as saying, what's the distance from here to the outside of the circle? Okay, and that's, uh, that's called radius, okay? And um, that can be measured, um, either measured or that's given. Okay, so this is the first rendition of the formula. If we want to find for radius, we can uh, divide through, uh, we can multiply through by t, Okay, and that gets rid on the other side. So TV is 2 pi r. Okay, and, and dividing by velocity, the period is 2 pi r over velocity. Okay, that's our second rendition of the formula. And then our third one, okay, could be this. two pi r over period, solving for, let's say, the radius. TV is two pi r, and then get rid of the two pi. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. Radius is TV over two pi. And this is the third rendition of the formula. So our rotational velocity formula okay, stated as v is 2 pi r over period can also be written as 2 pi r f because 1 over the period is the frequency. So we can either call it 2 pi r over period or 2 pi r f. Um, and then in this case, you can pull out frequency and radius. So um, let's look at this one. 2 pi r f. Uh, equals V. Let's solve for F. So cleaning it up, frequency is velocity over 2 pi radius. Okay, that's the, this is the first rendition, second rendition. Okay, the third rendition Okay, solving for radius. Okay, radius is the velocity over 2 pi frequency. Okay, this is our third rendition. I'll bring that up a little bit so you can see it. This is our third rendition of the formula. Okay, number three. And in the problem set, you'll have to solve for either the velocity, the frequency, or the radius of the circle.